Well, here is a Sony. This is a five disc changer from the early 90s. The model is CDP-C305. Let's go ahead and power the unit on and see what happens. So it's looking for a disc. It's gonna check every spot. And it could not find a disc. No disc is displayed on the front panel. So let's go ahead and open the drawer. I will pop a disc into slot number one. We'll close it and see if it reads the disc. It sounds like it's trying to. Nope, it's gonna move on. Oh, that's not good. The motor has no torque whatsoever. Oh, it's thinking about it. Oh, it just can't get it up fast enough. No disc. So does it have a bad motor? Bad motor driver? What is going on with this thing? All right, so I went ahead and pulled the CD mechanism out of the unit, and there are four electrolytics and one tantalum capacitor on this board. So let's go ahead and check the ESR with my new blue ESR tester. Power the unit on, short the leads together, zero the leads out, 0, 0.0 ohms. This is a 47, I expect to see maybe one ohm or less, 1.9, a little higher than I expected. This is a 47.95, much better. This is another 47, 1.1, not too terribly bad. This is a 4.7, so probably 10 ohms or so. Yeah, it measures 12. And this is a 22 microfarad tantalum. And tantalum caps normally have a much lower ESR than electrolytics, so probably half an ohm or so, 0.23 ohms. All the capacitors test perfectly fine. So what could be going on with this thing if it's not a high ESR capacitor because all those Test perfectly fine. Does it just have a bad motor? So let's go ahead and supply some voltage to the motor and see if it spins. Okay, so I have my power supply connected to the spindle motor, the turntable motor, and I have my current limit set at 25 milliamps. This motor should not draw much power. I'm up to 1.3 volts, no current. So these motors run at about three volts. It seems to be running perfectly fine. Let's bump up the current a little bit. Let's clamp a disc on it and see what it does. All right, I have a disc clamped. Let's hit the power button. Well, that should be perfectly fine. I don't see a problem with that at all. That's 3.08 volts and it's drawing 180 milliamps right now. Definitely spinning fast enough to read the table of contents at this point. It coasts very freely, so I don't think it has a bad bearing or bushing. What could be going on with this thing? So when I had the spindle motor out, I gave it about six volts to clean the commutator and the contacts. I reversed the direction and now check this out. Let me close the drawer, load the disc. And it read the table of contents perfectly fine. Let's hit play. Skip some tracks. And it's working. So this unit is going to need a new spindle motor assembly. But it's playing perfectly fine. Should I give it back to the customer like this? Everything else checks fine. The capacitors check great. I checked the power supply caps. They all tested perfectly fine as well. So I'm gonna leave it up to the customer if they just wanna try it this way. I'll just charge them a minimum labor charge. I did an optical pickup cleaning. It made no difference prior to me driving the spindle motor, but it's working absolutely fine at this point. All right, so I talked to my customer 
and the customer decided to go ahead and have me replace the spindle motor on this unit. So I went ahead and ordered some spindle motors from China. They just came in. So let's go ahead and get one of them put in. So right there with the red mark is the solder pad I need to bridge before I disconnect the ribbon cable from the optical block. Okay, there it is. Now I can go ahead and unclip these two tabs. And I can slide the ribbon cable out. And now I know the optical block is safe because I bridged the laser diode so there will be no electrostatic discharge damage. So there's the old motor. You can see where the positive lead is and the negative. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little Sharpie. And I'm just gonna put a little mark right here a red dot so I can get it back in the same orientation. So next I want to pay particular attention to the gap right there. I need to make sure that gap is exactly the same when I put the turntable back on the new motor. So I've got a set of feeler gauges here. don't know if you can see them or not, but I have a 20 and a 22 thousandths. So 42 thousandths and it just slides in with a bit of force. So I'm going to make sure that I get this back to 42 thousandths of an inch. All right, so next, hopefully this will cooperate. I'm going to try to pry it up and off. And look at that. Came right off. So we'll get one of the new motors. Torqued to spec, put the board back on it, solder it up, remove that solder bridge from the optical block right here and give it a go. Even though it's a brand new motor, I still want to go ahead and give it just a droplet of oil. Just to make sure the bushing is lubricated adequately. I would say that's it. It goes in with just a bit of resistance. All right, I'm gonna start by attaching the ribbon cable back to the optical block. Lock the connector in place. And I'm just gonna wipe the solder off the solder blob. Just like that. Clean up the rosin flux with a little acid brush. Good as new. And we'll solder the new motor and the sled motor back in place. And a little acetone to clean the flux off the board to make it look brand new. All right, looks absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and remount the optical pickup mechanism assembly back in the CD player. And hopefully it plays the disc in the right direction. Hopefully they didn't screw up on the motor. All right, mounted back in place. Let's go ahead and plug in the main ribbon cable. All right, that is connected. Next, we'll go ahead and drop the turntable back into it. Sometimes easier said than done. It 
does require a slight amount of prying uh, to get it down in there just like that. So when you're putting in these bolts, Try to use the old threads. Don't try to cut new threads. And the way you do this is to put the bolt in here, then rotate it counterclockwise until it drops. And then you're in the old thread pattern and you won't have to cut new threads that way. Now make sure when you put this piece back in here that there's nothing stuck on the magnet. Because if you set it with your screws, it's going to retain screws. Make sure you have your spring on. Hook this side in, the non-movable side. And then this side has a clip that you can release. Now once the disc is in here, it's going to set the spindle up a little bit higher. So you really want to bring this up almost all the way until it lifts up on the magnet assembly because the disc is going to add another sixty thousandths of an inch to it. Okay, let's go ahead and pop a disc in it now that it's all back together. I'll open the drawer, pop a disc in it out here, close the drawer, and it read the table of contents perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and hit play. I do not have speakers connected at this point. I just want to make sure it plays all the tracks. So first track, and I'm going to go ahead and zip to the very last track. You should see the disc slowing down. There we are on the last track. Okay, speakers are connected. Let's hit play and we'll just play a couple of seconds of each track. Well, there it is. Played every track perfectly. Anyhow, that's it. The Sony CDPC 305 up and running again. So I just need to go ahead and put the covers back on it and ship it back to my customer. I think the customer is going to be very happy. It just needed a replacement spindle turntable motor. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and I respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.